failing to plan. Growing up, my dad had a lot of sayings. One of my favorites, although I didn't always abide by it, was failing to plan is planning to fail. Now, I'm not a big fan of football, nor did I watch the Super Bowl. However, there was a bit of news that came out of it that was of interest to me. The 49ers failed to plan. You see, the rules for overtime at the end of the Super Bowl are different than that of the regular season for the NFL. At the end of regulation, and if the game is tied, each team would have the opportunity to score a touchdown on their possession. The Kansas City Chiefs discussed the changes for this all the way back during their training camp last summer. The 49ers had no clue of the rule change. The game this past Sunday ended in a tie at the end of regulation. Some of the players for the 49ers stated that they were only made aware of the new overtime rules by reading it on one of the jumbotrons during a commercial break. Because of this, there was no game plan in place to factor in the rule changes. The Chiefs, who had discussed it since last summer, knew exactly what they were going to do. They planned ahead and won the game. What about you? Are you failing to plan? If so, you are planning to fail. The same is for our afterlife. Jesus said in John 14 that he is the only way to God. By failing to receive God's plan for eternal life, you are planning to fail. Christian, by not following the principles and precepts found in God's word, you are planning to fail. And that is news to me. Another great resource from The Voice. The Heritage Pin is great for special witness tool to show your Christian faith. Six different designs express your American patriotism and biblical commitment to those around you. Oh, and the Star of David shows that we stand with Israel. Order yours today to show where you stand. George Washington started the Civil War. Oh, Brother Steve, you're in the wrong war. Okay, but just hear me out. Contrary to popular opinion, what is currently being taught in the public indoctrination centers, or public schools, our founders were not all entitled white slaveholders who hated the black man. In fact, in 1774, Ben Franklin and Benjamin Rush founded the Abolition Society of Pennsylvania. John Jay, the first Supreme Court Chief Justice, did the same in New York. John Adams and James Madison frequently spoke against slavery. George Washington supported the freeing of slaves in the Continental Army and supported a plan for abolition. Thomas Jefferson, who wrote the Declaration of Independence, included language such as all men are created equal, showing the tendencies of abolition by the founders. However, these men knew that they could not pass the Constitution, written by Madison, a Virginian, with the original language that prohibited slavery. The founders decided to tolerate slavery where it already existed. They never sanctioned slavery, nor even used the word slave in the Constitution. By the time the Constitution was drafted, nearly every state in the Union had some legislation against slavery. In the mid-1800s, Stephen Douglas emphasized this position during his many debates with Abraham Lincoln. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787, currently Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, slavery was not allowed. By 1808, slave trade had ended in the United States. This converted slavery from a national institution to a southern institution. This allowed slavery to grow south of the Mason-Dixon line as an institution transition from being a market to generational. The founders knew that if they addressed the slavery issue, it would cause a civil war. Because of this decision to let it alone, Washington and the other fathers of this country let the future generations hash out the issue. We all know that nearly half a century later, the prolonging of their decision came to the head and the civil war was fought. And that is news, or history, to me. Taking a quick break to bring you a great resource from the Voice in the Wilderness. Dear Mr. Creator, please tell me what this universe was made for. Please, Mr. Creator, tell me what man was made for. Will you tell me why the peanut was made? To find out the answers to these questions and more, request this pulpit pamphleteer on what matters. Christian Testimonies, A Forgotten Heritage of Black Lives. A monument erected. With the tearing down of monuments, it's good to see one being placed. This march there is to be a monument erected at Riverside Cemetery in honor of the sailors who lost their lives aboard the USS Asheville during World War II. The original USS Asheville, and there have been four of them, 
was assigned to the Pacific during the war. Having patrolled the South Pacific, the Asheville was to rendezvous with other naval ships in the Philippines. However, a Japanese destroyer saw the ship and sank it near Java with only one survivor. Fred Brown was placed in a concentration camp and finally died in 1945. Prior to his death, he told the other prisoners about the fate of the Asheville. In just a few weeks, we will honor these who gave their lives so that we can be free. And that is news to me. On a side note, the other day I was trying to explain the concept of six degrees of separation to my eldest daughter. After much explaining, she finally got the concept. It got me thinking, though. We are only one degree of separation from God. Because of our sin nature, we are separated from Him, and He provided a way for us to be reunited. Through Jesus Christ, that one degree of separation, we can have fellowship with God. Christian, what are the things in your life that is keeping you separated from God? What other degrees are you putting between you and your Savior? And this has been News to Me.